Next morning we got on the bus for the descent down from the hills to the area of Tamil Nadu. First of all, going through a tea plantation, you saw how there was basically an entire community created by the um, plantation so that everything was cared for, catered for, their housing, their health, their children's education and so on. And the landscape was something like out of um, something like Lord of the Rings, all these beautiful lush green colours and the way in which the tea trees had been cut out in little patterns. When we got to the top you could see across the plain and you realise that you're about 5,000 feet, about the height of Ben Nevis. Then we came across some tea pickers, which surprisingly we hadn't really seen very many. Yeah, and you could see how they actually did it, balancing anything up to about 15 or 20 kilos of tea on their head. And sometimes walking with them on their head, no hands, and carrying electric cutters. You can see them trimming off the top. And as I've said before, they work all day and they get about four pounds. They do get all the health care and benefits and free accommodation provided by the plantation. This is really what you wanted to see, having spent so much time looking at the tea plantations themselves. I think they cut the leaves every 14 days, then wait for new growth. Then off again, past lots of hairpin bends, including one that had a truck upside down, clearly going too fast, waterfalls and the inevitable street vendors selling all sorts of food that looks absolutely lovely, but not having an Indian digestive system health looks a bit too dangerous to try. Love to have tried them. Then back on the bus, past more beautiful landscapes, into an area which had been dammed, and apparently there are elephants around there. We saw a sign saying, elephants of right of way. These are the cottages that the tea workers each have one, and they live there with their family, rent free, again part of a community. As well as elephants, there are also wild boar. Here's another tea t picker, and you can see the electric cutter that they use to skim off the top. Then into Tamil Nadu, and each state has its own border control, and you have to produce your papers. As you can see from the video, it was extremely high and very twisty. Interestingly, lots of monkeys. Beauty monkeys. The whole family of monkeys there. Really tortuous hairpin bends. Thank God it wasn't raining. We did stop for 
a short break, but unfortunately it was so misty you couldn't really see anything. Tortuous hairpins. And you can see the plateau in the distance. And we're going to be driving across that for a couple of hours to get to Madurai, which is a very important Tamil city. On the way, we went through a few Tamil towns and very different from the other towns most stuff in Tamil rather than English. Lots of churches as before. Lots more bikes, less cars, as it's not as wealthy. Uh, in front of you on the right more hand tuk -tuks. side, there is a little colorful temple. Then we came across ploughing being carried out by ox, which is extremely unusual, as most of them use motorized tractors to do it, but it was something else to see. They plant a lot of rice and they get a couple of crops a year. Then after that, we came across a funeral procession. The local custom is that the deceased is dressed in their finest clothes, usually propped sitting up with a pair of sunglasses on. And then the men lead the procession with the women at the back and lots of garlands and firecrackers. And they then proceed to the cremation. Not very often you get to see that. Then we got to the hotel, right in the centre of Magi, which is another crazy, barking, busy city, lots of tooting of horns, and then walked into the centre near the temple. This is by the south gate. Everyone trying to sell everything. Really, really colourful, vibrant, noisy, bustling. And that's what we come to see. The South Gate of the Temple, South Tower. I've never seen anything like it. Intricate um, plasterwork, which is painted every 10 or 12 years. All of the figures are telling a story, all from Hindu. In the evening we were allowed to walk around but you weren't allowed to take your camera so we saw an amazing procession where Vishnu is taken to his bride's chamber every night. And um, here we are again in a tuk-tuk to get back to the hotel, which was a bit like an arcade game or being in it. It wasn't as bad when it was in the centre where it was all very slow, but then when we got out and the centre and it all started getting a bit faster. We started to grip our seats. Next morning we were up at 5am to get into the town for 6, no breakfast, to see how the morning starts each day with the women wiping off the, and cleaning the front steps and then decorating them in white and red, two very important Hindu colours. They go through an enormous amount of ritual every morning, getting the water, cleaning the step, opening up shrines, making offerings, lighting lamps 
feeding cows. Seem to be cows lurking everywhere, waiting to be fed. They're all owned by somebody, but they all have to be fed and milked. So it was interesting walking through the back streets. And there you are, someone washing and preparing the shrine for the day. Huge amount of Hindu time is spent on these rituals. And again, temples everywhere, little tiny ones guarding each house. Another one being washed. So, first thing in the morning, the street that was heaving with people and bikes is empty, though there are people out selling food, passers-by. And then gradually, within about half an hour or 45 minutes, the town starts to liven up. More cows waiting patiently. It's cow heaven here. They milk them by hand, obviously. And then the tuk-tuks start coming out. People start arriving for work. And then the markets. So he went, first of all, to the vegetable market. And you could see everyone setting out their stalls and getting ready, having a chat. Some of them travel large distances every day to sell their particular fruit. One merchant we got some pineapples from comes all the way from Kerala in the hills with pineapples and he sells all the pineapples to this town. So after that we went back to the hotel, had breakfast and then I slept through till about one o'clock. Then I went up and had a look at the hotel pool which was empty to see the view around the city. Incredibly noisy. Everyone toots their horn every 30 seconds. Then, back on the bus, we visited a temple, or a palace, which was owned by one of the dynasties before the British arrived. As you can imagine, lots of ornate carving and plaster work. They're back on the bus. Interestingly, different streets sell different things. So this is Garlic Street, and all the stalls on this street only sell garlic. And then there's another street where they sell onions. And in there is where they sell bananas. So everyone together selling the same thing. At least you need no way you need to go to. Not as easy as walking around Sainsbury's. Then across to the other side of town and we went to the Gandhi Museum, couldn't film it. And then we went, last thing of the day, the flower market. Now I thought we'd see flowers like we get at home, but here you just buy the flower heads and they're used for one day only and then they're thrown away, which is a tragedy. And it's about I don't know, a pound for a kilo of flower heads and obviously you have to buy lots of colours and then you arrange them into either a gift to friends or garlands or events or to decorate statues or um, to um, decorate shrines, obviously. So this huge, massive market with more flowers than you could possibly imagine, just the flower heads, every day. And there's the example of the garland. About five quid for a long one and about 50p for a short one. <laughs> 